Hi, I'm Leland Jung, a student docent at City College of San Francisco. Today I'm going to be talking about the Diego Rivera Pan American Unity Mural, Surrealism and Social Revolution. This is the sixth video and final video of our series. In earlier videos, we showed how Surrealism was an anti-war literary and art movement that also wanted revolutionary change. And Rivera's mural had Surrealism influences and had a hidden message for a socialist revolution. This video will summarize information from prior videos and compare Rivera's mural with Picasso's anti-war masterpiece, Guernica. In Diego Rivera's oral interview, transcribed and translated by Eliana Gadia Rivas, a City College of San Francisco student in 2005, Diego Rivera describes how Peter Proigal, a Flemish artist, would paint scenes from the Old and New Testament to represent current scenes of injustices to avoid repression. Rivera felt the people would still understand the true meaning of the painting. Do you agree with Rivera? He completed the mural in 1940. Seven years earlier, in 1933, Diego Rivera painted the Man at the Crossroad mural at Rockefeller Center. The mural had an image of Lenin in the mural. Lenin was the communist leader of the Soviet Union. Due to public outcry, Rivera was asked to remove the Lenin image. He refused and the mural was destroyed. Therefore, for the City College Pan American Unity mural, he could not have an overt communist or socialist message. Two years before he painted the Pan American Unity mural, in 1938, Andre Breton, the co-founder of the Surrealism movement, visited Mexico and met with Diego Rivera and Leon Trotsky, an exiled communist revolutionary. Diego Rivera, and Andre Breton signed a manifesto for an independent revolutionary art believed to be written by Trotsky. The manifesto said art was essential for revolution, but also advocated artistic freedom, the independence of art for the revolution, and the revolution for the complete liberation of art. Breton was supposed to give lectures on surrealism in Mexico, and Diego Rivera did this print called Communicating Vessels. It was based on a Breton essay that hoped surrealism would be used to connect different worlds that were separated for far too long. Let's look at the print's composition. We have a complex image in the middle, an exposed brain, and a grotesque face. We also have two vertical images on the sides, two vessels or two glasses, one with an eye closed and another with an eye open. We also have a blood vessel connecting the two vessels or two glasses. Look at the black dots. They're like blood cells moving through the blood vessel and going from one glass to the other and communicating. Now, let's look at Rivera's mural. Do you see similarities? In the center, we have a complex structure too. We also have two vertical images on the sides. On the left side, we have this steely or stone pillar, and on the right side, we have this giant corkscrew for pressing wine. 
There's also this plank and rooftops where people can move from one side of the mural to the other. Communicating vessels is based on a science experiment where two vessels with different amounts of fluids will become equal and in equilibrium and in balance if connected. Surrealism attempted to be that connection. In Breton's essay, he said, the Surrealism movement hoped to connect different worlds, such as the world for life for life and the world of life for revolution. Therefore, the mural may have had a message for revolution too. The question is what type of revolution? Let's look at the mural, the implied lines from the loom, tree, and John Brown points to a scene in the background. A scene from the movie, The Battleship Potemkin. Now, let's look at the woman, Frida Kahlo. Look at the right arm. It's pointing to the same movie scene. The movie is about sailors or soldiers joining forces with the people to oppose an oppressive government. The mural has an image of a woman carrying a child. In the Battleship Potemkin movie, there's also a scene of a woman carrying a child, an injured child. Now, let's compare the mural to Picasso's anti-war painting, Guernica. On the right, we have an image of a woman with her arms raised and a cube above her. The cube may be representing a bomb. In the mural, we have an image of Charlie Chaplin with his arms raised instead. But instead of a cube that may be representing a bomb. We have fascist leaders ab above Charlie Chaplin. We have Stalin, Hitler, and Mussolini. In the center of the mural, we have a ram with men chopping it with axes. In the center of Guernica, we have a horse instead of the ram. And it looks like there may be an axe handle embedded in its body. And on the left of Guernica, we have a woman carrying a child. just like the mural. And the Battleship Potemkin movie, a movie about soldiers joining forces with the people. The mural also has scenes from a Charlie Chaplin movie, The Great Dictator, made in 1940. The movie in the movie, Charlie Chaplin gives a speech asking soldiers to stop fighting for fascist leaders and join the people too. Therefore, the mural has a common socialist message of soldiers joining with the working class. Here's a David Afaro Siqueiros print with the same message called the unity of farmers, soldiers, and workers done in 1924.
Uh, this photo of police joining with Black Lives Matter protesters may have a similar message. This is the sixth and final video. I'm Leland Jung, a City College of San Francisco student docent. Please check out our website for more information about the mural in the video description section. By the way, City College of San Francisco is free. Please consider enrolling.